Hi guys and welcome to my channel to Ch Ch Keep for Cancer. My name is Jody, and I have been living with cancer for the better half of 20 years fighting it and for the last seven years I have been fighting um, stage 4 metastatic triple negative breast cancer that is metastasized uh, through my body taking half of my stomach and my intestines um, my right kidney and um, then settled in my bones so I can tell you firsthand <laughs> that cancer causes stress but what does stress do to cancer it's a little bit different that's what we're going to talk today about we are going to talk about the stresses that are going around specifically the stresses that are happening nowadays with the covid with um the various protesters, the rioting, the violence that has surrounded us in the recent uh, months. Um, I, could, I could pretty much guarantee that brings a little bit of stress to each and every one of us. So today, we're going to talk about how that affects us and what we can do to maybe try to keep it at bay. Okay. And there's just one thing bugging me. I'm gonna get this bug off my screen. Sorry about that. Try to edit that out. <laughs> so, and if you don't mind, I'm going to use some notes because I did a lot of research for this topic. <laughs> um, okay, let's just start with the stresses of today. Um, if you have cancer or you don't have cancer, either way, we feel we all feel stress, right? But if you have strength cancer, I'm going to put a pin in that. I'm going to explain the dangers of those two. Okay, so today um, I turned on the TV and there's the news, and they're talking about the COVID. They're talking about this person said this on Twitter, and that person's racist. That person said that. This person said this, you can't say this, you can say that. This is no longer politically correct. All of this stuff is going around and you're just like, ah! I'm going around thinking, okay, I'm afraid to say anything. Am I gonna say something that's gonna hurt somebody? Because I certainly don't wanna do that. Am I going to say something that is gonna make myself look bad? I don't wanna do that, <laughs> right? If you're honest, you're like, not all about the other person, it's about you too. So. I turn on the TV and I'm left with this feeling of, you know, like, ah, uh, there's some things that come on the TV, you know, on a show, um, news, talk shows, whatever. And I instantly get this gut feeling that, oh, that's not right. Okay. Then what happens? That causes anger because you're thinking, that's just not right. Why is this happening? So then you have stress and you have anger, right? Okay, so there's all that going on. And sometimes by denying your feelings, like for example, say I'm afraid to say something wrong to another person because I don't want to harm them. Um, but I'm not really sure what I'm saying is harmful, but I don't want to hurt them. So I err on the side of caution. I keep my mouth shut which by the way is a good thing to do. <laughs> and But then I just pull it all down deep inside and it stays there and it adds to my internal stress. Okay, so keeping your feelings and your frustrations and your thoughts, your true beliefs, all of that inside of you can cause uh, physical ailments. It can give you headaches and aches and pains and all of that while it doesn't hasn't been proven to cause cancer it can add to your cancer and it can prevent your treatment from being as effective okay so that's where as cancer survivors and cancer um, patients and thrivers that's what we need to really be careful of more than any other person um, that just feels the normal stress of the day right 
So I started thinking about it and just kind of digging deep in my own, um, you know, my own self. And I started just kind of writing out all the things that I just, just pointed out on paper. Not for anybody to see. I was not going to read it to anybody. Just trying to find out what I really thought inside. What I really believe. How, what am I viewing? What, what is my view of COVID? What is my view? What is my fears? What is just all of it? And I just put it all on the paper. And then I just put everything I was feeling about the one thing about the riots. That's one thing that's really, really weighing heavy on my heart because number one, my husband is a retired police officer. Number two, my son is now a police officer. <laughs> and I'm seeing all this and it's affecting my, it's making me incredibly sad. And with that sadness comes confusion and anger. So I take all of that and I put it on the paper. And I'm not writing it out as if um, other others were going to read it. And I'm not writing it. I'm not editing anything. I'm just getting it all out there. And then as I read it, I start seeing clarity. And the feeling inside of me starts, oh, okay. Because guess what? I don't have to have the same thoughts as anybody. And neither do you. You don't have to support what is going on in the world. You can support specific things in the world that you feel strong about. But guess what? Freedom of speech, people. Freedom of belief system. Not everybody is going to be the same. And that is okay. But what is not okay is we go around with these like, try not to offend, everybody's trying to be polite, politically correct, and then inside, we're not true to ourselves, and we are damaging ourselves. Okay, so, that set aside, that's one type of stress, and my personal stress, that I've been experiencing. Sorry about the cars going by, driving me nuts. I'm getting a new, a new microphone, I broke mine, Arr! then I accidentally mailed my second one that I bought, my microphone, to Idaho with my grandchildren in their bags. I don't know how it happened. Anyway, so I'm buying another one and the sound will improve. Okay, so now um, let's talk about cancer and stress. Woohoo! All right, there was a study done uh, by a gentleman, uh, not a gentleman, a doctor, uh, Dr. Cole, and he is, he's a scientist. He studies uh, gene expressions uh, and genomes. And he did a study of rats. He used rats. And I feel really sad because I love rats. Don't ask. I've had them as pets and stuff. So it kind of makes me sad this test did this to these rats. But they did it with a good out, with a uh, positive outcome. Uh, so don't get upset when you hear this. They took two rats and they gave one rat cancer and the second can rat cancer, same kinds of cancer, and then they did another set of rats with different kinds of cancers. Anyway, whole bunch of rats, whole bunch of cancers, and they took one rat and they put it in a stressful environment. And I didn't know this, but did you know if you leave a rat alone in a cage, it gets depressed and stressed out? Rats are meant, they like, they're social creatures. They like to be around each other. So this little rat with cancer, they were stressing it out. They, they were doing all this stuff to strobe lights and just, bleh. they were stressing this poor baby out, okay? Then the second rat, they gave it, um, uh, it's family, and they they just they made it the best environment it could be for a rat. Okay, so the stressed out rat, guess what? Their tumors grew two times as fast as the rat that was not stressed out. Okay, now you could say, well, that's a rat. Okay, well they did this over and over and over on different animals. And guess what? 
the results were the same. So, yeah, not good. So then the second part of the test was um, they started healing these rats, trying to cure these rats. They gave it chemotherapy and all the same treatments that they would give us. They gave these poor little rats fat. And once again, they took stressed out rat and they gave it this, the chemotherapy and the, the cure. The other rat was in a hospital, hospitable environment and given the treatment. And guess which one died and guess which one lived? You got it, the one that had a good, supportive, calm environment. That rat was able to beat his cancer, whereas the stressed out rats all died. All of them dead, gone. <sighs> so, this doctor, and he's from UC Davis, if you wanna look him up, his name is Dr. Uh, Cole with a C, C-O-L-E. Um, his test, his, his end result was that not only does stress affect our cure, but it also uh, affects our lifespan. Even if they took rats that did not have a, ter they would not normally be terminal, but they put them in a stressful environment and they became terminal, if that makes any sense. So say you have a stage one cancer and you're very stressed out and then you do your treatment and because you're so toxic and you're stressed out, your treatment doesn't work and then the cancer kills you where normally that would not happen. So that's what his test, that's what the results were of his test. So now we bring it back home today. We as a nation are facing and have been facing this pandemic and, and just fear for our own lives. And as a cancer patient, you've got fear for your life because inside this, this cancer is eating away at you. And now you have this outward fear of the pandemic getting to you and killing you twice as fast. If that is not stressful, I don't know what is. So, these are some things that I've been doing and I have been studying and I think that maybe it could help you guys out. So, I am going to give them to you because I love you guys so much and I do not want you guys to be stressed out. <laughs> um, okay, here are some tips that Dr. Cole came up with. Unplug, that means turn off the news, turn off your, just unplug. You know, get away from all external stuff. And that was that was the first one. And then, this was an odd one, but it says go with your gut. The first thing that you hear, the first thing that you are exposed to, and the first feeling that hits you, that is normally the one that you should be paying attention to. When you start trying to make yourself match with other people's, responses to situations causes stress. So he says, go with your gut. And there is that silly little, ugh, drive me crazy. Okay, number three, go back to your roots. Go back to your belief system, okay? So whatever that is, whatever belief system uh, that you have, your roots, your foundation, go back to that, reclaim it, and start hanging on to it. Number four is prayer and meditation. Um, they actually did a brain uh, MRI of someone meditating and someone praying uh, in a stressful environment. They made stressors and then they had the person meditate and pray and then they you know, watched the brain activity and the brain activity was as if nothing was going on around them. So there you go. Number four, prayer and meditation. Okay, number five, he says self-seek. Now I'm not really sure what that means, but I kind of think it means just dig deep within yourself and um, yeah. Okay, number six, write what you know to be facts, not feelings, but facts, 
and put it on a piece of paper. Google it if you have to. Dig deeper. So when you hear, when you're faced with information, just like when the doctor says, you have stage four metastatic triple negative breast cancer, what's the first thing you do? You wanna know what that is, right? You don't just say, oh yeah, I have cancer. Oh my God, crap. No, you go and you either Google or you ask questions or you seek out answers. And then when you find the truth, it can really give you a calming sensation. Because like the first thing when I heard stage four, I thought I meant that was the end, I was gonna die in a couple months. But no, that's just the stage of my cancer. That's the size of your tumors. So once I learned that, I had less stress. So he says to get your facts straight <laughs> with whatever is stressing you out. Go in there, get your facts, and just that. Um, all right, then number seven, he suggests stand in your knowledge. So basically, you get your facts, you get your knowledge, and you stand strong in that. You don't let people waver you. You stick to the facts. Nothing but the facts, ma'am. <laughs> okay. And then number eight, he says, then let the rest go. Now, that has got to be the hardest thing for me to do because I'm a super control freak. I like to make sure that my environment, make sure that my family, make sure that my everything is in control, and if I can control it, that's even better. <laughs> um, so letting things go is not my nature, but you know what? You can practice it. You can start with one little thing, one little thing that's bugging the heck out of you. Just every time it comes into your mind, you just say stop, don't even go there. Just go into the, and then replace it with something positive. Replace it with something positive. So something comes up on TV that bugs the heck out of you and you can't control it, just say stop. Replace it with a good thought, with a truth, maybe something that you Googled, something that you know to be true, and then go on from there. Okay, and the last thing that he suggests, number nine, is guard your space. Okay, guard your space. I'm not really sure what he meant by that, but I'm thinking that maybe guard what is in your environment, possibly. You guys, you'll have make, drop a comment below and see what you think that means, guard your space. I mean, don't let anybody near you, social distance. Uh, I don't think so, because when he wrote this, there was no social distancing. <laughs> so guard your space. All right. You guys drop a comment below and let me know what you think that he might have meant by that. And then we can share and we can all benefit from your knowledge. All right, now, if you have not been following me and you don't know who I am, go ahead and watch some videos. Get to know me, get to know my story, get to know how I have lived 20 years with cancer. And better yet, get to know me because I want to get to know you. <laughs> we have an awesome community here. We, there's so much positive vibes going on in this 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 group. I mean, once in a while we get a hater. You know, Mr. Tom or Tim pops up and naughty guy. We we get rid of them. We block him. Get them out of the way. So we have positive and happy vibes all on this channel. So if you want to join us and you want to learn some something about the insides, inside working of having and living with cancer, uh, and how I have gotten into remission just recently, yay, then go ahead and hit subscribe and set that bell up for notifications so you don't miss anything. Okay, and I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think that's it for today. Um, oh, I was going to let you guys know, I hit my 20 pound mark. Um, I've lost 20 pounds. I've been trying to lose weight ever since I stopped uh, chemotherapy and um, all the different drugs that I've been on. And uh, 20 pounds down in two, two months. So about 10 pounds a month, which I think is um, a pretty good pace. So I am going strong and um, doing a lot of walking and exercise. I've had a kidney infection and it's really been hard but I plan on getting back to that. Uh, so 
there you go. That's it for today. You guys have an awesome day. And don't forget, don't be stressed or try not to, but use these Use these techniques that we talked about today. You know what? Put them into action and then let me know how it turns out. All right. I will see you guys next week at Too Cute for Cancer. You guys take care. Make sure you're safe. Get your mask. Do your social distancing and eat well. Keep your immune system up. And I will see you next week. Bye.